Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Alessandro Boncio was trying to recreate these titles, which is from a movie called Upgrade, and he came up with a really fun technique that we're gonna go over today. So you can see that it's all about splines, getting them to emit forward, and then react to some sort of a sound effector to have these really nice animations. And then at some point, it even turns into these sort of square blocky shapes. All right, so we're gonna start with a very basic spline, which just has two points. You can see that this point is at minus 500 centimeters, and this point on this end is at plus 500 centimeters. So instead of using this as our spline, we're gonna do this procedurally, and we're gonna do that using a Mo spline. And we're gonna reference the original spline and yet be able to add deformers and fall off and everything using this Mo spline. So we'll go to the Mo spline and we'll change the mode to spline, and that's gonna create a little tab here, which if we click on, we can add our source spline here by dragging and dropping it. All right, we have our Mo spline now, and the nice thing about being procedural is that if we go to count, we can actually change the, um, the amount of subdivision on this spline. So if it's looking a bit janky, you can just increase this to say 500, and you're gonna have a lot more subdivision to have a smoother animation. We're gonna use a emitter next to shoot out this Mo spline, and we'll hit Shift C to pull up the command dialog, and we're gonna type in emitter and hit enter. We'll drag the Mo spline into the emitter, and if we hit play, you can see that we're shooting out our little particles here, but they are um, all over on the Y. We want them to be flat, so we're gonna go to our emitter, and on the Y size, we'll just change that to one centimeter, and then these will be shot out on a flat plane. And they are actually shooting out the most spline right now, but we can't see it, so we'll go to particle and click show objects. Just check that on. All right, so now we're shooting out our spline, and this is going to be the base of our animation. Let's go to our most spline and under object, under display mode, let's change that to line just so we can see the lines better. And now we need to add a sound effector to have these lines sort of dance and animate. So we'll do shift C and type in sound, and this will be a MoGraph sound effector. We're gonna drag that into the most spline and let's go to the effector and under soundtrack, let's load up a MP3. And if we hit play now, we can see that we have this waveform going and it's sampling a little slice of it right here with this yellow box. I want this to be quite a bit bigger and to sample over here so we have more animation going on in our splines, something like that. And it's also bouncing too high, so we're gonna go to the parameters and we'll change the Y to 20 centimeters. And finally, let's change the deformer from off. Let's change it to point mode. We want these uh, to have some fall off, so just part of them is bouncing. And we're gonna do that by going to the fields tab and we'll click and hold right here and add a box field. And it's a little bit hard to see what's going on because it's adding a little box representation for all these lines. And a nice way to get around that is just to drag and drop that box field out of the hierarchy. And now we can see what's going on a lot easier, but it's still being referenced in that fields tab. All right, so if we drag this box, you can see that wherever it is, it's uh, having a fall off effect on these splines. So let's have this animation continue a little bit further and we'll drag this box somewhere in the middle and we'll also make it a little bit wider so maybe 350 wide maybe make it a bit wider on the z as well all right let's put our camera in the front and we'll be able to see what's going on and now we want to add some noise as well so let's go back to our fields let's hold down this tab right here and let's click on shader field make sure you change the blending mode to multiply and let's go into the shader and add some noise. So under shader, twirl it up and do noise. And now we're getting those really nice noise effects here. So we want this one to be pretty big and just some waving lines to start with. So let's click on here and go to our global scale, make it quite large, maybe a thousand. And we'll go with that for our sort of our base animation. All right, now we wanna add another layer of deformation that's a little bit smaller. And we're gonna do that with a displacer. So we'll type in displace, and we have a MoGraph displacer, and we're gonna drag that. Actually, before we do that, let's uh, twirl up that sound effector. We're gonna drag the displacer right underneath it, not inside of it, but right underneath it. All right, so under displacer, let's go to the height. We're gonna make this a bit stronger, 25. And now we just have to add a noise under the shading tab, we'll add a noise. And let's go in here and change the type of noise. And maybe we'll go with dense. And you can see that um, these are laying flat on the ground. We want them to be up, so we have to change the orientation. We can do that in our displacer if we go to Object. Under Direction, we'll change it from Vertex Normal to Planar. 
and let's change the orientation to plus y then they'll be going up and down. So this is looking good, but these lines are being displaced uh, across the entire line. They're not having any fall off. So let's just borrow that box field. Let's go to our displacer and go to fields, and we'll just drag and drop this same box field into here. And now we will respect that fall off with all of our splines, and we're gonna get something that looks like this. Uh, let's go to our displacer and play with the settings a little bit in here. Uh, the global scale probably needs to be a bit bigger, and that's looking pretty cool. All right, let's add a little bit of animation as well. We can maybe add 0.2. And if you wanna visualize what this animation speed is doing, just right click on this little thumbnail here and click animate. So then you can see a nice representation of what that animation speed is gonna look like. The other thing is let's add some looping and you're gonna want this to match your frame rate. So if you hit Control D, you'll pull up your project settings and you can see that this is 30 frames per second. So if we go back to our displacer in the noise, Let's change that loop period to 30 frames per second as well. And there we go, we'll have a nice perfect loop. All right, so here's our animation so far. The other thing that was in that animation was at one point it transitioned into these really nice cubed, kind of blocky looking splines. And we're gonna do that with a different displacer. Let's just change this one to round and let's control drag down to make a duplicate. And we'll call this one square. And I'm gonna turn off the original one and let's go to the square one and we'll play around with that noise. If you change this to cell noise, it makes a really nice blocky pattern. You can take the global scale and make that a lot less so that you have smaller little uh, cubes here. And then it looks like they're being displaced too high. So we can go to the object and make it maybe 10 centimeters in height, something like that. And that would be the square displacement effect. So the final piece in the puzzle is animating it so that we have nothing and then all of a sudden we have these round ones pop up and then they transition into the square ones. Well, we do have a bit of an issue here and I don't know if it's a bug with Cinema 4D or what, but here's the problem. If we go to our strength and we wanna take this down to zero and then animate it on, we can go to zero and make a keyframe. If we scrub down and then we try to make this 100%, look what happens when I let go. It just snaps back to zero. It won't let me um, animate this slider. Um, I'm not sure if this is a bug, or what's going on here, but we do have a bit of a workaround. So I'm gonna show you that now. So we'll go to animation and delete tracks. And let's see if we can't figure out how to animate this slider. We're gonna do this by adding a new null. So we'll add a new null. And let's call this strength. And we're gonna do a tiny bit of espresso to get this set up. Let's go to our displacer under strength. If you right click on it, go to user interface and then click copy user data interface. It's gonna copy that, go back to the strength null and there's a user data tab right here. Click that and click add user data. All right, so you can see this data text right here, right click on it and hit paste and we'll have that strength parameter. Go ahead and delete that data and under strength, let's just name this uh, round so that we know what's going on and then hit okay. All right, so basically what we did was we added a slider to this, um, this null right here. So we have a slider under the user data, and this one's for round. We also wanna have a slider for square. So let's go to square, go to strength and right click on it, go to user interface, copy user data interface, click on that, back to your null, click on user data, add user data, and right click on that data, hit paste, delete that original data, and then on this strength, we're gonna change this one to square, and then hit okay. All right, so we have our two sliders set up here. Now we just have to link them up using Expresso, which is going to be very easy. Just right click on your null, go to Programming Tags and Expresso. We're gonna have a window pop up as well as an Expresso tag, so if you wanna access that window, just double click on this tag. And we're going to drag in this null and we want the null parameters of these two sliders so that we can link them up to the displacers. So we're gonna click on this round and drag it into this strength and hover over the red output and let go. And now we have that one. Drag the square one, same spot, let go. All right, we have round and square and we just need to pipe them into these displacers. So let's drag our round displacer in here and now we just need that displacer strength. So if we take the strength and we go to the blue input and let go, now we have the strength. So we can hook up that slider from the null to the strength 
and now this one is ready to go. We got to do the same with the square. So we'll drag the square deformer in here, and then we need to go to the square strength, drag and drop it onto the blue, and now we just have to link this up, and there we go. If we turn our square one back on and we use these sliders, you can see that we are animating these sliders and it's changing the displacement on those two displacers. So everything's set up perfectly and the great news is that you can animate these. So if we go to the beginning, let's say that we want our round to be at zero and then a little bit down the timeline, we want our round displacers to kick on. We'll do that and now you can see that everything works great and we're able to animate that on. So that looks good. And then let's say that at some point, maybe right here, we could make another keyframe. And then on the square one, we could keyframe, go down a bit. We'll take the round one down to zero and we'll kick on the square one. And now we have that animation. So if we play that transition, it'll start and then the round ones will come on. And then at some point it'll transition into those square blocks. So there you go, that is the general setup. The rest of it is up to you to play around with the different noise settings and speed and all that sort of thing. If you wanna add more um, lines so that it looks a little bit better, you can go to the emitter and you can change the birth rate uh, editor and renderer, and then we'll have twice as many lines coming out and we'll have a nicer result as well. The only other thing is that when you render this, uh, you're gonna need to add a hair tag. So we have one set up here. Let me go to our material manager. If you drag the hair tag onto the most spline, and then you also need to right click on it and add a hair tags render. And then we should be able to render everything just fine. So I'm gonna put a Cinema 4D file in the description with our lighting setup. Uh, Alessandro made a really nice lighting setup. The camera has some nice chromatic aberration and some depth of field. And we also have an environment with some fog and we have a sun with some nice settings. So I'll leave this part in the description so you can kind of analyze the lighting, but you'll get some really, really nice effects that will look pretty close to the main titles. I hope you all enjoyed that and learned some new techniques. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.